There's something else in all this. Australia is one of only nine countries in the world with AAA credit ratings from the three ratings agencies, Standard & Poor's, Moody's and Fitch. Well, this week, Fitch's Australian sovereign analyst, Jeremy Zook, was in town doing research. Zook, importantly, is also the analyst who assigns China with its credit rating. So I took the chance to speak with Jeremy Zook and started by asking whether our budget creates pressure for inflation to rise or to fall. Well, our, our view is that it creates some very modest inflationary pressure, right? You, you have, uh, first of all, the, the tax cuts, which were already baked into these forecasts, but then you have these cost of living adjustments uh, as well, or relief that the government provided. That will give households a little more money in their pocketbooks, and, uh, you know, they can go out and, and spend, we think, a portion of that. But uh, in all, you think we, we do think it will be relatively modest in terms of its impact, and so far we don't really think it will have uh, much of a change in our view on on the RBA. We still expect them to cut in November. We see sort of the, the tightening that has happened in, in the past that's still feeding through into to households. Households are, are still, uh, you know, seeing interest rate, uh, interest rate payments uh, rising and, and uh, that's eating into their ability to go out and spend and, and very uh, much tightening domestic demand. And, and we think that that will be sufficient to bring down inflation and, and we think the RBA uh, we'll, we'll use that and, and cut uh, rates in November. So, so go, to this, go to me the sense of a government that is spending and providing cost of living relief at the same time that the Reserve Bank with its interest rate policies is trying to quell demand. Don't the two of those sort of counteract each other in some ways? This is a discussion that uh, governments are having all over the world. You, you, you do have a, a, t a period where you know the economy is uh, does have a, a positive output gap, so growth is above or uh, has been above potential, and, and so there is a case to be made that certainly monetary and fiscal policy uh, should should be uh, working in, in tandem together to help bring down inflation. Now the budget uh, is, is only slightly expansionary in, in our view, and, and so the impact on inflation is. is just very mildly, um, you know, positive in, in terms of the inflationary impact. So the government has got one budget surplus that it's banked. It's yeah. got a, a second one that's forecast. But the reality is there is no budget surplus forecast for another decade. So a decade of deficits. Wouldn't you like to see governments be more ambitious about balancing the books more often to actually take some of that back to be absolutely certain of their credit ratings, of their robustness, if there is a, a severe downturn? So when we look at Australia's fiscal outcomes, they've certainly improved relative to where we thought they would be several years ago. And there are several factors behind that. You know, first of all, the commodity price boom has given uh, you know quite a bit of windfall in terms of revenue for the government. The economy has been running quite hot, and so that's provided a, a big boost in terms of uh, in income tax take. And so those things together have, have really improved the budget position. Now, when we look out further, we do see that return to deficits over the medium term. From a ratings perspective, it's still a very modest fiscal deficit. And when we look at, at uh, peers, advanced economy peers, Australia's deficits are somewhat well contained. When we look at the AAA category in particular, though, the, the AAA category is quite a strong category right now. So we're expecting Australia's, and we look at a general government deficit, so including the states and the federal government. The deficit uh, we forecast to be about 2% of GDP next year. And AAA median is about 0.3% of GDP deficit. Mm. So there's a, a, a quite a, a large difference there. Um, and, and is and that troubling you? Because in terms of maintaining that AAA credit rating, does it trouble you? Because as you point out, it's not good enough to compare yourself to the United States or to Europe or to Japan, because they run massive budget deficits. The ones, the peers that are triple rated, and Australia's one of only nine triple A rated by each of the three uh -huh. sovereigns ratings agencies, they've got to be amongst those as the best, but it seems as though there's deterioration. Well, when we uh, last affirmed Australia's rating last November, we, we affirmed it with a stable outlook. And so that means our expectation is that we don't see any any sort of change in the rating over the next several years. Uh, and that was even with this return to deficits. That was already baked into our, our forecasts. Um, I, I think when we think about what we're looking for, we're looking at, at the, the debt trajectory and what happens with gross general government debt. And our forecast now is that, that it rises just slightly in, in the near term, but remains relatively stable. 
Uh, that being said, again, going back to the AAA comparison, the AAA median is about 35% of GDP. Australia is sitting now just under 50% of GDP in, in terms of its general government debt burden. Uh, so I, I think, you know, if we think about rebuilding of some of these fiscal buffers, if that were to occur and uh, the debt to GDP ratio were to de decline more, more significantly, uh, that would give certainly more scope for Australia to manage uh, future shocks and um, maintain sort of the results. So in other words, your, your, the message to politicians and to Treasury is to be ever vigilant about that debt, to not simply take it for granted that there is a AAA credit rating out there forever. That is something certainly that uh, we're looking at in terms of the sovereign rating. It's, it's probably the, the most important factor in, in terms of uh, where we view Australia's rating going forward. Uh, as I mentioned, though, we do expect that debt ratio to be relatively stable, and that would be consistent with the AAA rating still. So one thing that you also do is that you are the sovereign analyst when it comes to China, That's which right. is so important to Australia's economy. The two are hand in glove in many ways. So therefore, shocks in the Chinese economy would therefore have an impact on Australia. Mm -hmm. So the question is whether that symbiotic relationship is going to be therefore really much determining the future of Australia's AAA credit rating. It, it certainly uh, has an impact on Australia's economic outcomes. Australia has benefited quite significantly from China's rapid growth over the past couple of decades. Certainly in terms of commodity exports, that's uh, been sort of the main market for Australia. Right now we've seen in China quite a large negative adjustment in the property sector. And we would have thought that this would have a, a, a very severe negative impact on iron ore prices, coal prices. But so far, it really hasn't. I'll tell you what, Jeremy, great to have you on the program today and many thanks for your time. Yep. Great to be here. Thank you.